Hey everyone, welcome back. It's so nice to see you again. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to set up condensation, water drops, call it whatever you want, onto any of your models in the Unreal Engine. Now, I just want to preface this video by saying that I cannot take full credit for coming up with the trick. Um, that credit goes to Lucas Heike. He came up with this idea of how to set up water drops on your materials a few weeks ago on ArtStation. Now, I'm a big believer in giving credit where credit is due. So go check out his ArtStation. He's a great artist. So Lucas, thank you so much. Um, now, I took this shader and I improved upon it and made a few changes to it in order to get a bit more control over all our materials. So with that out of the way, let's jump into Unreal. All right, so before we get started, let's just take a look at the scene and how it's set up real quick. So first and foremost, all I have in here is just one model for the bottle and one model for the cork. That's really the, it. So let's go take a look at what the wine bottle actually looks like. And it's really, it's it's just this. It's just a regular wine bottle. There's no water droplet modeled on top of it. All the water drops are purely done with normal maps, okay? Now, I tried to actually get the modeled water drops, like actual geo with Houdini using the water droplet solver, um, scattering all these water drops onto the wine bottle itself, exporting that geo into Unreal, now that really didn't work so well because despite the fact that Unreal has come leaps and bounds in the past year or two, uh, ray trace translucency still looks real bad. It's not good. You, you lose a lot of the highlights. Things just don't look photoreal. So that's why I had to use another approach. So as you can see here, I had to set up a sequencer and use the movie render queue. Um, the reason why I had to use the movie render queue is because we have a lot of really sharp, shiny reflections that need a lot of samples to look right. So fortunately with the movie render queue, I cranked up those AA samples to like 64 in some of the shots. If you don't know how to use the movie render queue, I have three videos about it right here that you can go ahead and watch and learn everything you need to know about how to use the movie render queue and increase the quality of your renders. Moving on. Now, the way I've lit the scene is just the way I would light it in real life. So I've got a bunch of rect lights here. And in real life, I would probably light this wine bottle with long rectangular soft boxes. And that's exactly what I've done here. So just four lights with varying intensity just to kind of get those nice highlights on a bottle itself. Now, time for the juicy part, and that's the material itself. So before we even jump into the individual nodes, the first thing you want to do is you need to go to the shading model of your shader here and set it to clear coat, okay? By default, it's set to default lit. You wanna set it to clear coat. This entire water drop system depends on a clear coat system, okay? So without the clear coat, this whole thing falls apart. So set that up first. Next up, we've got base color. So it's just a regular constant three vector, flat base color. You'll see why it's green a little bit later, okay? So for, it can be any color you want, okay? Um, next up is the specular and the roughness. I set these to 0 0.05 to both of them. By all means, you do not need to have the same values that you would here. You have complete and total artistic and creative freedom here. These are the values that worked for me and the render that you saw in the intro, but you do not have to use these values at all. Next up, we're gonna look at the tessellation and displacement. So this looks a little bit scarier and a little bit more complicated than it probably should be. Um, but this is the displacement node setup that Megascans have been using, at least up until recently. And the reason why I'm using this is because I like having full control over the contrast and the intensity of my displacement. Um, because it's a, it's a hand-painted or a handmade displacement map, it's not, some, it's not a scan. So I, I like having full control over every aspect of my displacement map. But by all means, you can also just plug in your displacement map into a multiply with a vertex normal world space node that'll work too. You don't have to have this exact setup, but you know what? I like it. So this is what worked for me. Next up, we've got just a regular text cord plugged into the multiply with the tiling because this whole system, the whole water drop system is using a tileable texture. So you have full control over how much tiling you want. Okay. So you can just slap the shader onto any model, any piece of geo, and it's going to work just fine. Now this is where the real magic happens. Okay. And this is with the normal map. All right. So, so let's take a look at the actual individual map. So this is the normal map that I'm using. This is a stencil. So really it's just a black and white map telling me where my water drops are and where they aren't. And I'm using a really basic 
displays the map. This is nothing fancy, just something to just kind of bump it up a little bit. All right. So I've got my normal map here that's plugged into my tiling. And this is where you, this is the important one here. So we're going to have a constant three vector. So a three by three. So if you hold the three key and click, you can have a new one showing up. Uh, the most important thing here is you want to set the red and green channel to minus one and leave the blue channel to one. So what this is doing is it's flipping the red and green channel of your normal map. And why would you want to do that? Because we're using clear coat, we have the regular normal map that's bumping our water drops upwards and the clear coat normal map, which we want that to invert that to kind of fake the caustic refraction going on inside the water droplets. Okay, so you, you'll be able to see a little bit later how this is all working together. Okay, now I have a flattened normal here uh, that's plugged in. This is just to give me a bit more control over the intensity of that caustic refraction. So both of these are plugged into a multiply node and you really need to have this node here called the clear coat bottom normal in order for the clear coat system to work. So you just press the tab key and type clear coat, clear coat normal custom output, click on that, everything, and that's how it shows up. Okay, so this doesn't need to be plugged into anything. The shader understands that, okay, you want clear coat, this is how you get it to work. And last, I've just got my tessellation multiplier at the four and clear coat roughness at the 0.05. And that's really all there is to it. This is a, a pretty simple shader. It's nothing complicated here. It's just, it's a really clever yet effective way to get water droplets. <clears throat> so let's take a look at how this is all working on the model, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide all the lights except for one. Say this one, there we go. So I've hidden all the lights and just one, just so that we can, we're not too confused about all the lights shining at the same time. So one light to keep things simple. So let's look at the water droplets here, all right? I'm gonna move the shader node tree right here. So if I were to flatten this entirely and only have our normal normal map, okay, this is what would happen, okay? We, we get our droplets coming at, showing up on our model, and this is actually not bad, right? We kind of get the, the bumpy, water droppy look. But unfortunately, we don't really, we, it kind of stops there. We don't get the refraction in the water drops. And that's where the clear coat normal comes in. So I'm gonna unflatten this at the zero and see the difference so to one back to zero. Do you see that difference now? Now we get this whole extra highlight inside the water drop, all right? And this is how we kind of get that a little bit more of a convincing effect. So let's look up close at a different spot here, okay? Let's set this back to one to flatten it out. This is only normal map, and this is with the shader trick going on. So we, I'm not sure if you can see in this video. Let me zoom in a bit more. But especially in the, in the highlights here, we get an extra little bit of just refraction in here. And that is how you get that more convincing water droplet effect to work. So I actually set it to like 0.3. Just because I, I wanted to tone down the effect a little bit, like I said, you have total creative freedom. There's no right or wrong answer here. This is just personal taste. I think this looks, this setting looks the best, but it is totally up to you. Now let's take a look at the displacement real quick, okay? The tessellation. I have this model tessellated like crazy because I want each drop to kind of pop out a little bit. If I were to turn the tessellation off, okay? If I set this to zero. Now from far away, it, it actually still reads pretty well. But when it starts falling apart when, you, when you're up close, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unhide my other lights here so we can see better. And so now there's no tessellation. And if I set the tessellation back on, it gives you a bit more of a convincing effect. You only really notice it when you're up close, but I'm gonna do it again. So zero and one. So it, it's just uh, that extra little something. It kind of breaks up the silhouette of the bottle right around the edges. So that's the main reason I have it, especially on the neck of the bottle here, right? If I were to turn this off, it just doesn't, you kind of lose that uh, convincingness. So just breaking up those straight lines is the way to go. Now, we still have one major problem. And that problem is because we're using clear coat, we kind of lose a bit of control over the material of the bottle itself, right? So as you can see here, like the, both the water drops and the bottle have the same material. So let's say I were to set the, I want to change the roughness of the bottle. I can't really because of the clear coat. So let's say I got to go to roughness. I'm going to set this roughness to 
0.5, okay? It, normally roughness of 0.5 should be very rough, but it's still very glossy. So I need to change the clear coat roughness as well. So it's to 0.5. Now we're getting actually kind of a cool frosted look, uh, but it's not very realistic because the water drops themselves should be super glossy. Now, I know you can easily go ahead and add a lerp node because we have the, 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 the stencil map, right? We have this map mask that we can plug that into a lerp node and individually control the roughness of the drops and the bottle itself. But that's not quite the level of control that I want because what happens if I want the bottle to have some subsurface scattering? And in this case, I do. Well, you can't because we're using the clear coat shading model, right? So going back to the shader, okay, I'm if I wanted to have subsurface scattering on the bottle, I can't because then I lose the clear coat. So what do you do in this case? So that's where opacity comes into play, all right? So I have my stencil mask here, this mask right here, plugged into the same tiling node as all the other maps. I'm going to, I just have a one minus here just to invert that map. And I want to basically mask out all the water drops. But you'll see, oh no, I can't because it's grayed out. In the shader, you can change the blend mode from opaque to masked. All right, so I'm going to apply this. And now, if I plug my one minus into opacity mask, You'll see here, we're getting only the water drops. Now I'm going to set my roughness back to 0 0.05 and roughness to 0 0.05. Now let's go see how this looks on our model now. Now you'll see all we have left now are just the individual water drops. So what do you do? So I went ahead and I just duplicated this same bottle that had the water drops on it. So I'm going to hit control W to duplicate it. And I'm going to slap on the water bottle shader. So this water bottle shader, it has some subsurface scattering. It's a totally different shading model than the clear coat. Let's see how this looks. Now we have our water bottle and I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's a little bit of subsurface scattering happening, happening along the edges, but because we've masked out the water droplets and are being displaced, they're showing up on top of the water bottle. With this trick, you're capable, you're able to have two completely different shading models, two completely different shaders. So it gives you way more control over the shading and everything. So right now I, I've added, it, it. you might not be able to see in the video, but I've got like a little bit of bump in here. I've got some more roughness breakup on the bottle itself. And, and to, to top it all off, I have a totally different shading model, which is subsurface scattering. So let's take a look at the shader of the wine bottle real quick. Uh, it, it's pretty simple, it's nothing fancy. I have my Shading model set to subsurface, which I would not have been able to do if I had remained within the clear coat system. So you'll notice that the SSS color of the wine bottle is like a dark forest green. And if you remember at the beginning of this lesson, you'll see why this is the base color of the water drops is a dark green. This is why I want the water drops to be roughly the same color as the wine bottle itself. So going back to my wine bottle shader here, I just have like a um, so, so some roughness breakup textures that I'm tiling all over the wine bottle just to give it a little bit of breakup. I'm converting this texture you'll see here. I'm converting this texture here that I got from Megascans to uh, a normal map. So you get normal from height map. Really, not, it's nothing fancy. It's a very, very simple shader. As you'll see on the wine bottle, it just gives you that little bit of breakup, a little bit of detail on the wine bottle itself to kind of help with a little bit more realism. And there you have it. That's really all there is to it. It's a little bit hacky. You're kind of cheating your way into getting a water drop mesh and a water bottle mesh. But hey, if it works and it looks good, that's all that matters. That is the most important thing. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this has helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions, if anything was not very clear or you know you have trouble following, let me know in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to answer your questions if things were not obvious or unclear. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you so desire. Hit the bell if you want to know when I'm having more videos coming out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.